Hey everybody, um, I'm doing a little information video on the sequential bipolar switch by John Bedini and Ron Cole. Um, this is the original schematic. Um, the only thing I have done different is this transistor right here. I used a 2N2907 PNP transistor because that's what I had on hand. But other than that, I have everything on this circuit is um, the same as the original. So basically, what this is, it's two hall triggered transistor switches that are wired into one. And the way it works, when this hall switch detects the south pole of a magnet, it turns on this transistor, which in turn turns on this one and this one, allowing current to flow this way with positive. Sorry, using my phone is kind of shaky. But the positive that's on there is if the left side was conducting. Now, if this transistor or if this hole switches off and this one over here turns on, then it turns on the other side of the circuit, which if you look at the circuit for a second, you'll understand that that would in turn cause positive to be on this side and the negative over here. So when this hole triggers, it sends current one way. When this hole triggers, it sends current the other way. You can split this up like I have here into two different circuits. This one here is the, see if you can see that 2955 right there. The only thing that is not on here is the actual hole switch. I just left it out of the way because it'd be a extra three wires in view there. But pin one of the hole goes to positive, pin two goes to negative, and the third pin would go to this resistor right here, which is the resistor branch you see right there to right there. In the middle of it goes to the base of the small transistor. So I'm just going to hold it here for a second, and you guys can pause it or whatever you need to to see how I've done this. And if you do it this way, you can take one of these strips, one of these white strips from Radio Shack, and split it in half, and then you make both halves of the circuit. And if what this will do, this is basically just a one-way... Okay, I reached a size limit on my video file there, so I'll make another one. Um, what I was saying was this, this one half of the circuit here would be a hall triggered switch. When the hall picks up a south pole magnet, it will turn both these transistors, all three transistors on, um, which will allow current to flow from the 2955 collector, which is bent up here. It's not in one of the sockets, to the 3055 collector, which is kind of hard to see there, but it's also bent up. It's not connected to anything. So if I put a coil between that collector and that collector, install the hall switch like I described before, then power this thing up, it would send current one direction. Now what you do is if you have two of them here, like I, like I said, if you have one backwards and you hook it up like this, this looks kind of funny and it's a big pain, but if, if you flip it around to where this one is a 3055, this one is a 2955. That collector and that collector get hooked together. And then the other two on this side get hooked together. And what that does is it makes it like that, where they're hooked together and hooked together on this side. Then when you hook the coil up between here and there, it'll allow it to go either direction or allow the current to go either direction. Now I've got see if I can find it here um, here's a list just to make it easier that is all you need for this like I said the 2907 PNP transistor is not what's in the original circuit it's just what I had but along with this if you want to get into the efficiency side of things instead of just building a circuit that'll pulse a coil and make a motor basically if you want to get into the efficiency side of it I can do it with my 
multimeter as you see here it's kind of hard to see but I can put a transistor in the bottom of my multimeter and it shows me the uh, the characteristics of it and then I can match or beta matches I believe what it's called the different gains of the different transistors until I find one or find matching sets you want them all to be as close to the same gain as possible along with that if you're trying to go for efficiency all of these transistors instead of being normal transistors should be potentiometers that allows you to adjust all the different voltages and saturation levels and all that different stuff that's going to the different transistors so you can really fine tune it and get it exactly the way you want it the way i have this set up here is if you're doing this circuit by itself and this circuit by itself take a diode and a cap and that catches the uh, inductive spike off the back end whenever the circuit shuts off and charges that cap up. In the normal circuit, because it is two of them hooked together, there is a bridge rectifier that hooks to one side there, comes up, hooks to the other side there, and that is what charges the caps. Now I want to note that when you're using it like that, it took me a minute to figure this out and I don't know why because it's kind of simple but whenever either of these circuits turns on it's also connecting the power straight to that bridge rectifier so if you're running from 12 volts it will instantly fill your caps up through the normal circuitry to 12 volts um, after the, it gets to 12 volts is when it'll start only absorbing the spikes because 12 volt battery can't charge a cap more than 12 volts but an inductive spike from a uh, magnetic field collapsing in a coil can so that's where you'll see it jump to 12 volts and then it'll slowly or fast depending on what kind of circuit you're or what kind of motor you're using it will charge up the cap and then you can see down here you can either send it back to the main battery or charge up the cap and discharge it into another load um, I think that's the main idea here and it's kind of dark down here, but I'll see if I can get this. I'm only using one half of this circuit. The cover at the bottom half, I'm using the top half. That PNP transistor, that PNP transistor, and this NPN. And then, it's just a regular drill battery. Hook up the positive. And you see it does nothing. It'll draw no energy at all until, well actually it draws um, enough current for the whole switch to, to work. So it's drawing about 12 milliamps right now. Uh, there is a magnet right there you can see that is south pole facing out I'll just give this a little I can't get it there we go oh, maybe. Oh. That is a coil. There's a neodymium magnet in there. And it'll just sit there and spin. And that's it. Thanks, folks.